I'm Dr. John Marshall. I'm board certified in emergency medicine, and I'm the acting chairman of emergency medicine here at Maimonides Medical Center. My medical training was in emergency medicine, uh, specifically. Uh, something some people aren't really entirely familiar with. I think sometimes people have the impression that people who work in the emergency room are internists or surgeons or other folks. And actually people who work in the ER are, are residency trained board certified emergency specialists uh, who dedicate their careers to working in the emergency department. So my training uh, my training, the course to become a, a, an emergency specialist, uh, involved four years of uh, residency training after medical school, uh, specifically in an emergency medicine residency program to become an emergency specialist. I did my emergency medicine training at uh, Denver General Hospital, uh, now called Denver Health Medical Center. Uh, uh, I did my medical school at the University of Michigan uh, originally before that. I selected emergency medicine because, uh, frankly, I couldn't really imagine doing anything else, I suppose, with my life. That's maybe more of a personal reason. I think outside of the personal reason, one of the wonderful things about working in the emergency department is you have the opportunity to take care of people um, at the times that are their most difficult. You really have a chance to really do um, wonderful things for people. Sometimes there are people we, we, we can't do anything for. Um, but this is really a time when people are most vulnerable and most in need. And I, I personally found that environment to be, um, to be very satisfying and to be where I, I really wanted to work. I have a particular area of interest myself uh, in, um, in medical education specifically. I spent uh, four years as the residency program director running our training program for emergency medicine and some years before that uh, as the associate program director. Uh, I feel medical education is just something that I, I, I have a passion for. I enjoy teaching. Uh, I enjoy teaching residents, medical students, um, you know, members of the staff, the community. I think uh, medical education, while, while perhaps not as exciting as you know, developing new medications or new drugs or developing new therapies, um, really is the, is the lifeline for maintaining good medical care for generations to come. Uh, and being an educator, uh, being an educator myself is something that I, I, that I think is, is a real passion for those of us who dedicate our lives to it. So. Being in an emergency department for a patient is a very stressful, very difficult, very emotionally charged experience. And you know, part of the you know, part of the medicine, I guess, part of the healing process for taking care of patients in the emergency department uh, involves not just the medications or the X-rays or, or or the procedures, but also um, the human contact, the communication, uh, the the exchange of knowledge, and and the recognition of the person as a human being, and uh, and really providing that patient with uh, a substantial measure of respect as another person. And again, it's to me, it's it's really a, all about humanism and compassionate care. Two of the biggest things that have been in the process of developing, I should say, or two of the biggest developments in emergency medicine over the last few years um, uh, have to do, uh, one, with diagnostics, uh, and two, with how we manage the emergency department. The first one is the development of ultrasonography as a bedside tool. Now, ultrasound is commonly used in the obstetric office. It's commonly used in cardiologist's office and obviously in, in radiology practice. But bringing it to the patient's bedside in a critical care situation or uh, in an emergency department is something that's been uh, progressively developing and actually in an in a increasingly accelerating manner, um, particularly through emergency medicine. We have several ultrasound certified attendings in the department uh, who are qualified to perform their own ultrasounds and do those on a daily basis. So, for example, if I have a patient and I'm concerned that the patient may have a blood clot in their leg. The patient may be too sick to be able to go someplace to have someone do that ultrasound. I can do that at the bedside and make that decision myself. If I need to e evaluate someone's heart, rather than just putting a stethoscope on them and or doing a chest x-ray or doing a cardiogram, all of which I would do, I can also put the ultrasound probe on that patient's heart and I can see their heart beating. Part of it is making people's lives easier. Part of it is making their experience in the emergency department easier. Part of it is also maximizing the efficiency of the staff and the ED to ensure that 
um, when somebody comes in who is sicker maybe than they look or maybe they're having a heart attack but they're not having the classic symptoms and, and nobody's really sure, making sure we have the right resources in place, that we make sure that that patient doesn't wait in the waiting room, that they get seen expeditiously, that the, that um, those signals get picked up and that patient gets treated in a really efficient manner. I try and communicate the message that you know, even though they may have gotten the feeling from the popular press or from television shows, et cetera, that the the emergency department is a is a really uh, sort of a a rough and kind of aggressive and unwelcoming place that that they they shouldn't be afraid to come to the emergency department. And the people who are there in the emergency department, the folks working in the emergency department are there for them and there to provide care for them. And if they feel like they need emergency care, uh, then by all means, call an ambulance, uh, come to the hospital, let us evaluate you, uh, let us uh, let us see what you need, let us give you the treatment that you need. And if you can go home, we'll absolutely let you go home and if you need to stay in the hospital we'll get you taken care of no matter what you need because that's what we're there for we're there for the patients 24 hours a day seven days of the week 365 days a year you know, for me personally one of the key moments in my career uh, has been around the opportunities to to work with and educate and train young physicians and there's nothing I find more satisfying than having had the chance, and as I've had over several years, of talking to people after they've graduated, after we've trained them, after they've moved on, uh, and hearing about the care they've provided. I can think of one of our former residents in particular, Caleb Hernandez, was a, a, a great kid who worked very hard during uh, training, um, who uh, moved to Denver, the Denver area actually, uh, after training. And uh, I got a call from his boss probably about six months after he moved there saying that uh, they had had a patient come to the emergency department, a young woman in uh, her 30s who had been in arrest, probably from an overdose. They weren't entirely sure what. And, uh, and this director of this emergency department in no uncertain terms told me that had it been any other physician who worked there in that emergency department that day that that woman would be dead. But the quality of care that Caleb provided, the um, medical knowledge that, that we gave him that he was able to bring to bear on that patient, and, and his tenacity, his insistence on making sure that that patient um, pulled through um, resulted in that woman being able to walk out of the hospital two weeks later, um, even walking through the emergency department to shake his hand on the way out. And that was a great feeling.